Hello everyone, here we are yet again. Ozone, love it, hate it. Uh, our content objective today is that ozone, which is really just a molecule, it's three oxygens bonded together, can play both a beneficial role to life on Earth and a detrimental one. And it's, it all depends on where that ozone is located uh, in the atmosphere. And so there's things that can make it, and then there's a variety of things that can destroy it. So I'm going to pause for a second while you check out the little cartoon there and just uh, also point out that I know there's a lot of misconceptions with uh, ozone depletion and climate change and so hopefully we'll address some of those and put those to rest today. Then also just notice I'm outside here on this beautiful January day wearing shorts, the birds are chirping, sun's shining, it seems totally normal. Uh, or is it? But so here we go. Uh, ozone. The essential question is basically what I just went over. So what's, what's the deal with ozone? We're going to start off with the ozone that is down low where we are. Uh, and so I want you to remember this mantra to keep it straight. We've got good up high, bad nearby. And so uh, I'm going to show you this little diagram of the atmosphere, yet more vocabulary. It goes, uh, here we are on Earth in the Bay Area. It's the first layer is troposphere stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, then there's even one more called the exosphere and you can see there's like satellites and spaceships out here. Most your experience of life on Earth is down here in the troposphere and this is really where all the action is. Uh, but the stratosphere is part of our, our, our flip lecture today too because that's where the up high is. And so um, back to this, uh, the way you can remember troposphere, just one little linguistic device and that's where the nearby is that's where we don't want ozone troposphere tr for trope uh, is also tr for trees so trees are in the troposphere and so that's just a, a way you can remember it so here's what ozone is it's a, it's a secondary pollutant which means it forms after it's, it's not a primary pollutant primary pollutants come straight from the source a secondary one is one that uh, forms after it's already been emitted uh, somehow and so uh, we're going to take a look over here at this automobile and as you can imagine that tailpipe is hot don't touch it I won't even put my cursor by that uh, and so here's how it works uh, when you have hot combustion the nitrogen uh, in the air will react with oxygen to create N2O or nitri uh, nitrogen oxide which uh, and once that forms it later reacts with carbon monoxide or even oxygen to create O3 so the O3 happens kind of like down the chain a little bit uh, and it's all involved with uh, smog. And so N2O is what gives that smog that brownish lovely look. And I know we've all seen smog uh, here and even in the Bay Area. And so smog uh, is, you know, of course, Los Angeles gets all the credit or the, the, is famous for their smog. And this is to give Los Angeles a little bit of uh, credit, though, uh, it, it, the air there has improved dramatically in the last 20 years or so. Uh, but they used to call it smell A. You can see it on a clear day. Uh, and these are, you know, just look at that brown haze. Yuck. You can barely see the mountains in the background. If you're down there on the ground, it's just, you know, it's, it's gross. My first experience of smog uh, happened on my uh, one of my little traveling trips when I, I went down to this is Santiago, Chile, uh, and I'd got that was my destination. I'd been backpacking for months. Finally got there, and this is what I saw, and it was really my first experience with it uh, with bad smog, the kind that can like make your eyes water, uh, make your nose run, and I mean, really, it's not a pretty thing. And so, what's going? What, what do these two places have in common? And so, El, notice that they both have mountains. And uh, they're both by the coast, but the, the ocean's not so important because Denver, Colorado has also got it going on. It's really more about being in a basin. And so you've got these mountains here, and you get lots of traffic, so lots of hot tailpipes making that nitrogen oxide. And what happens is you get temperature inversions. And so the sun is rising over here, and maybe you've got a shadow right here, and it's nice and cool in the morning. And then what happens is the sun comes up, and it starts to, everything starts to get hot, and hot air blows in. Um, and it, it's called a temperature inversion. So you got warm air on top of cold air. Usually it's the other way around, right? Warm air rises, but in, in some cases you get a temperature inversion or a thermal inversion where the cold air on top traps that warm air on the bottom. And so if there's pollution in there, it can't get out and the mountains block it in. So it just kind of gets locked in. And so on those hot summer days where it's still, and the air's not really moving, that's when you, you really get socked in with smog. And it's not a, it's not a pretty thing. It causes respiratory problems for, for kids and, and for adults and, you know, probably mostly little kids and, and older folks too. Um, 
And uh, not only it doesn't come only from cars, it can come from anything that's getting hot. So basically, anywhere that you're, you've got like emissions, like so power plants, like coal burning power plants, and things like that too. And so here we are at five minutes. We're going to go ahead and cut this off. So this is about the ozone bad nearby, which equals smog. And so you're going to want to come back and here in just a nanosecond, we're going to get into the good up high part, which is all about the ozone layer. Okay, thanks. See you in a second.